So it's late. It's like midnight. I just got back from work. Uh, but the house is empty, and I wanted to do this for a while. So I'm just going to do it. You know, you got you to gotta iron while the shirt is hot. So they say. I wanted to talk about something that I feel like is fairly universal. I think everybody can relate to it on some level. I think it's just kind of a part of being human, at least especially in this generation. I know it mostly in the context of somebody who is a filmmaker, just because that's what I do. So I guess I'm going to approach it from that lens. But I feel like even if you don't work in some kind of art or entertainment field, you might get this. And it's it's about criticism, and it's about self-awareness and self-consciousness. Uh, sort of criticism in the way it affects you and others. I went to this film festival last week. It, it was a low-budget film festival. It wasn't like everything was stellar. Uh, and so there were a couple that were really good. Uh, there were some that were like, okay, where it's like, these guys are talented, but they're held back by their equipment and that sort of thing. Some of them were just bad. It's just what happens. Uh, there was one in particular that was just very, very bad. Like, it was just kind of a thing where it was like, why did you even make this? Uh, they had a fairly nice camera. That was pretty much what you can say about it. And... It was a really cliched string of events with no justification for, like, any of it. It was basically just a chase scene and a guy dying. And it just randomly pulled cancer out of nowhere. It was what we kind of make fun of as, you know, a movie that somebody would make in high school or, or like, a, like, a bad film school uh, student's film, you know, first film sort of thing. And they were doing the Q&A afterwards, like they usually do with festivals. They are doing a Q&A. And, uh... One of the ladies, bless her soul, uh, I don't think she meant it to come off this harsh, but she, she asked him, she was like, why did this happen? Like, like, like why did he do this? There's no motivation for it. And uh, the director, who was like a guy, he was pushing 40. He was, he was an older guy. Uh, was just like, oh, well, because of this. And, it's like, and she was like, okay, but that doesn't really explain like why this happened. And he basically just kind of like, defended it and pushed it. There, and then there was a lot of talk that was very, like, well, you see, we were doing this, we were really inspired by this, we had these, this great vision for this, and I'm like, none of that came through. I don't think any of that's actually there. And I kind of feel like you just want to be treated that way. I always get annoyed with people like this. Um, the, the whole thing where it's like, he's just not self-aware of his work. He can't see the flaws in his work. And... These pe like people like this frustrate me. I I've known some like closely, and it's just I don't know how to talk to them sometimes because it's like I don't understand this aversion to growth. To to me, that's what it feels like. Is it? It feels like nobody can criticize something you've done. You you can never look at something you've done and see anything wrong with it uh, because you just can't take that. And it's like okay, but how are you ever going to get better? How are you ever going to improve? And I, I just kept thinking about how, you know, I, I just made a film. And it was my it was my first time, like, actually doing, like, a project of that size. And I feel like it came out fairly well. But I still have a hard time watching it. I, 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 I pick apart all these things that are wrong with it. And I'm like, yeah, the shot didn't quite come out the way it was supposed to. I, I didn't push for the right performance. Or I, I should have written this differently. I'm that way with pretty much every film I've worked on. Even Shabbat Dinner, which has been watched a lot. I, I, I think over 100,000 times. I, I don't remember the number. It's on YouTube, and it blew up. It did a bunch of festivals. It got all this praise. And, like, I, I, I still watch it, and there's this one line in particular. I actually hate lacrosse. That drives me insane every time I say it, because I'm just like, why did I not say that differently? I miss, like a great opportunity to to have done my job and done this well. It is so hard for me to be happy with anything I've done. Like, most of the videos I've put up on this channel, I'm not really happy with. I'll probably hate this. I'll probably be like, oh man, you should have lit this vlog where you sat on your bed differently. And so it just baffles me to see people who are just completely deaf to criticism. I, I understand the whole thing with people making terrible comments that aren't helpful at all, that are just mean. You know, you, you put a lot of work into a video and somebody just says, you're gay, in a comment. And it's like, of course, that's not something you should pay attention to. Uh, but I feel like, personally, that you have to have some kind of self-awareness. 
And I feel like it's not just with film or even just with any kind of job in the arts or entertainment industry. I, I feel like in life, you have to be. I There are people who I was friends with who I just couldn't be friends with anymore because they were like this with their everyday lives. And I just didn't know what to do about it. I, I, I There are people who I, I couldn't talk to about issues because they would either just shut down, they would go into denial, they just were incapable of processing the whole maybe I should grow as a person thing. And I think that this whole thing, this, this, this inability to handle criticism comes out of a self-consciousness. I think it, I think it comes out of a fear that you are not good, that you, that you are not what you want to be. I think that self-consciousness, being conscious of self, is like you're thinking about yourself. And it, I don't mean it's like a selfish thing. It, it can be. It, it can definitely be a selfish thing. But I think it means that you're really sensitive to the way that people are perceiving you. And it's it's less about how they're actually doing it. And it's more about how you want to be seen. When you're self-conscious, it's, it's like, man, I really wish I was this. And it makes you really nervous that you're not. And so then a couple things can happen. You can either be really insecure about it and just hate yourself over it, over, over the shortcomings that you think you have, or you can go the denial route. It says that you are the thing you want to be. There's no way you're not the thing you want to be. You don't have to grow as a person to get to the point where you want to be. You're there. And it's, and it's about people knowing that you're there and kind of saving your ego, I think. I think that's the more negative version. Well, hating yourself is pretty negative too. I think the saddest thing about all of that is that I think if you were open and honest about yourself and your shortcomings, I think you would find out that you're not falling as short as you think you are. And there are people who will build you up and help you grow. You know, I, I, I feel like that's something that friends want to do. I think self-awareness is actually being able to step outside of yourself and see yourself. I, I think self-awareness is actually knowing how the things you say are coming off and knowing how you're affecting other people and knowing how well your work is actually succeeding or failing and how you can improve it. I feel like self-awareness is deeply tied into empathy. I, I think self-awareness is much more about you in the context of other people in the world, whereas self-consciousness, I think, is very inwardly focused and maybe i'm not using the words correctly but it's the only way i can think of to describe like these two different mindsets and so i think ultimately what the self-consciousness comes down to at least in this case is i think it's i, th I think it's this worry that you're going to be bad and that that's not okay that you can't be bad you can't make bad stuff you've got to be a good filmmaker you've got to succeed and i thought about it and i do it too I do it in a lot of ways. I do it with my film career. I get incredibly self-conscious about it. There are movies and stuff that I've worked on that I have kept secret and I don't tell anybody about. I'm always nervous for anybody to watch anything that I do. I sabotage myself in auditions a lot because I'm worried that I'm just not cut out for it. And so I make myself not cut out for it. So that way I was right. I think it's me knowing what I want to be and being afraid that I'm not it. I do it as a person, too. I, I've been told many times recently, actually, by a couple different people that I have very one-sided relationships, both uh, friendships, dating, like, whatever. Uh, I tend to not really talk about what I want. I think that it comes out of a self-conscious place. I think it comes out of like, I don't want people to know what I want because then, you know, they won't be able to say that I don't deserve it because I'm afraid that I don't deserve it. Uh, I think I want to be a useful person and I think that I want to make up for all these shortcomings that I see in myself. So I feel like in all these relationships, I try to make myself useful. I try to make them happy. I, I try to solve their problems. I try to solve everybody else's problems. And I guess what I'm finding is that uh, 
people who actually care about you don't like that. <laughs> they actually want to know the things that you want. And so I wasn't self-aware enough to realize that me acting that way was making people feel shut out. It was making them feel like I didn't value them. It was making them feel like they weren't useful to me. Uh, like there was no way that they could help me with anything. And which is not how I wanted it to come off, but it's how it did. I feel like self-awareness is the cure to self-consciousness because I think it lets us realize when we're holding ourselves back over stupid things and it tells us to just do it anyway like with gareth like with pretty much everything that i've accomplished even with shabbat dinner i was so incredibly nervous and i almost didn't audition I, I just felt like there was no way it would work it was such a huge thing to me uh but i forced myself to do it because i knew that it was something i needed to do and it wound up kind of being a catalyst for a lot of things in my life with Gareth, I was insanely worried about it, but I knew that this was a chance to do something, and so I made myself do it, and it wound up being okay. But ultimately, what my thinking kind of circled back around to uh, after the film festival was that there was this project I had worked on years ago. Uh, it was technically the first thing I actually wrote and directed. Uh, it was years before Gareth. It was the first episode of what was going to be this 10 episode web series. Uh, and I was really excited for it. I got a bunch of people to help me out, a bunch of actors that I am still mostly friends with and who I respect greatly. Uh, a couple of filmmakers who volunteered their time to shoot it for me. And uh, I, I got to shoot it in this fantastic studio that one of my teachers let me use free of charge just t to make something. And it was this awesome opportunity and I made it and it just did not come out well. And it was entirely on me. Like it, it was entirely because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have the knowledge of how to actually run a set and set everything up. I didn't have everything planned out. I felt like I had wasted everybody's time. And it got finished. And I showed it once. And then I was done. I, I, I just, I didn't want to put it out there anymore. And I had this whole series planned out and this fantastic cast. And I just didn't do anything with it. I was so afraid of the criticism of people pointing out that it was badly shot, that the, the, the sound mixing wasn't great, that it was just unprofessional, that I wasn't proud of the fact that we made it. And that's awful. I, I, I feel like it's something that does kind of deserve to be seen, if only because we made something. And it sucks for it to be just be put away and for nobody to see it. I can suck up the criticism. I can. So I'm uploading that on my uh, on my other channel, on my like film channel, where I am only going to upload like film things like that. Um, if you want to go watch it, it's called Back to One. It's something that I would still love to do right someday. Uh, it's It means a lot to me. I would love to get back as much of that cast as possible. I think like half the cast that was in Back to One was involved in Gareth. Chelsea... Miles, Tristan, Angela, Laura did the makeup for Gareth. Maxwell helped me by reading it and giving feedback and just being supportive. And I'm going to try to be more open with my work from now on. I want to be more self-aware and less self-conscious. I want to worry less about how people see me and worry more about how I'm actually affecting the people around me and whether I'm actually working to overcome the issues that I have. Because I do have issues. We all have issues that we need to work on, and I don't want to stagnate. I can always be working on something, and I want to always be improving. And a big part of that is going to be in the way I handle my criticism as well. I have been so incredibly critical of so many things just because of how critical I am of myself. And I want to be happier. I want to be able to just enjoy things despite their flaws. 
I want to stop trying to compensate for the fact that I don't think I'm a good enough filmmaker. So you know what? It is so stupid of me to be worried about being bad. Who am I to be above being bad? To be above making something bad? I made Cyber Punch. Like, Cyber Punch is there. Cyber Punch is horrible. And I'm alive. I think we would be much happier people if we weren't so afraid of making something that's maybe not up to our expectations. You know, I, that's something that we all have to deal with. And I think that if me and these other filmmakers were just more open with that, if we were just okay with letting ourselves be vulnerable and have stuff that maybe isn't that great out there, I think we'll be stronger artists for it. I just want to accept that this is where I am and keep working to improve it and do my best to help build up and improve the people who are trying. There's not a lot that I can do for the people who close themselves off and don't want to improve. But there's a lot of people I know who want to make things. And I can help with that. So thanks for watching. Maybe this will be a more regular thing when I get things to talk about. I don't know. It was nice to just kind of put my thoughts out there. So Back to One is up on my other channel now. If you want to watch it, link is right here. It's about 15 minutes long, I think. Probably a little bit under. Let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to have a discussion about this and maybe learn something and be less of a crappy person. All right. Thanks again, guys. I'm going to fall asleep.